All right, MacBook streamers, let's get into it. So when you download OBS, you will come up to a screen that looks just like this. It's gonna be a blank canvas and you down here at the bottom, you're gonna see these five different categories, scenes, sources, your audio mixer, your scene transitions and your controls. First thing we're gonna do is come over to our controls and hit settings here. We're gonna start dialing in our streaming settings. You wanna go to stream and then make sure that you're on the right service for where you wanna stream. There's many different uh, streaming platforms that you can stream to on here, you can select. But for our sakes, we're just gonna leave it on Twitch for right now. You wanna go ahead and leave it on audio, auto for the server and there's two things you can do here. You can connect via your login with Twitch if you want to, or you can input your stream key manually. And you wanna go ahead and check ignore streaming service settings. You're gonna get this warning box that pops up. Go ahead and hit yes. And this will allow you to basically push any setting that you want to your streaming service. Now I wanna come down here actually to video here and you wanna make sure that your base canvas and your output are at 1080p. So we're gonna change these guys to 1080p here. And you might see that your FPS is at 30. You wanna go ahead and make sure it is at 60 frames per second. Okay, now you wanna come over to output and you'll see all your streaming settings here that we're gonna be dialing in. First thing you wanna do is change the output mode up here from simple to advanced. And we're gonna be sticking in this streaming tab for right now. You wanna go ahead and leave those top two settings as is and your audio encoder as well as core audio AAC. For video encoder, this will be the first setting that we actually change. You wanna go ahead and change this from X264 to your Apple VT H264 hardware encoder. That is your graphics for your MacBook. We're not gonna rescale output and we're gonna come down here to encoder settings. You wanna leave your rate control at CBR. This is constant bit rate. Your bit rate is really important. This is pretty much what controls the quality of your stream. For 1080p, we're going to change this from 2,500 to 6,000. That will get you a nice 1080p 60 frames per second stream. Now to determine your actual bit rate, it all depends on your upload speeds for your internet. Now, if you're curious and you don't know where to go, like you don't know what your upload speeds are, it's a very simple Google search. You just type in speedtest.com and run your speeds uh, basically on Google, just like this. I like to use this site here, speedtest.net. Basically all you do is hit go and it'll run your speeds just like so. You just look at your upload speeds. If it's more than 10, you should be good for 1080p, 60 frames per second. So for your key frame intervals, you wanna go ahead and set this to two. Do not leave it on zero. You wanna go ahead and make sure your profile is also on high and you have the USB frames unchecked here. These will be your streaming settings for your MacBook. In audio, we're gonna leave all of this as is. We're not gonna do anything here. You might want to actually make sure all of these are disabled. You might see that your mic auxiliary is on default. And that's just pretty much pulling in your computer's mic audio. I like to do all this manually, especially if I already have another mic. So I am going to put it on disabled. And then in hotkeys, you can play around with this as much as you want. This is basically setting a key on your keyboard to do a certain action inside of OBS. For example, if you wanted to have a key that starts your stream and stops your stream, you just click on it and put the key there that you want and then for stopping the stream, you use the same key. And whenever you press this button, it will start your stream. You press it again and it will stop the stream. You could do this for pretty much all of your settings inside of OBS, including transitions. And when you start having actual sources and scenes, you can do hotkeys like hitting one to switch to your first scene or hitting two to switch to your second scene. However you wanna do that. This can get really crazy. So definitely play around with it and set it up to your liking. Make sure you hit apply on your way out of the settings and hit okay. Now I'm gonna show you how to set up your overlays and your stream. So coming on down over to your scenes, you will see you have a blank scene here. In your sources window, we're gonna go ahead and add our game capture. Uh, so we're gonna hit this plus button here and come up to video capture device. I'm gonna go ahead and click that and name it game capture. And then in devices, you wanna go ahead and find your capture card that you're streaming on. We are going to be using the Elgato HD60X as our capture card. And you will see once you click it, it's right here. I'm gonna leave everything else the same as is. 
and you're gonna hit okay and there is your capture you will notice on mac which is different from pc your capture card doesn't send the audio um directly to this video capture device we're gonna have to add manually add the game audio ourselves we're gonna come back down to this plus button and we're gonna add a in audio input capture and then you want to go and find your elgato hd60x or your capture card you want to go ahead and hit okay there and you'll see that now you have your game audio just like this down here in the audio mixer you can see the bars are going up when we make sound in the game Next, we're gonna go ahead and add your microphone. So if you are using a mic, you wanna go ahead and plug that into your MacBook right now and then add a new audio input capture device. We're gonna call this one mic. And you wanna go ahead and find your mic inside of your Mac. If you don't have a mic, you can also use your MacBook's mic. In your sources, we're gonna go ahead and add a camera now. You wanna go and click that plus button and go up to video capture device again. We're going to call this camera. You want to go ahead and hit OK. And you have a bunch of different options for your camera here. We're going to either use our MacBook's camera, so the FaceTime camera on the MacBook. So we can do that. And you can see once that is set up, you see me here. And uh, you can actually place your MacBook somewhere else so you can get a better view of this camera. So if you have an iPhone, you can actually use your iPhone's camera as your streaming camera. And it's actually really, really good quality, especially if you have like a newer iPhone. So let me show you how to set that up. It's really simple. All you gotta do is in your properties, uh, in devices, you wanna go to your iPhone camera and you're gonna see this message pop up on your iPhone camera, just like this. And you can see it already has it set up. So. And it's using the back of the iPhone as your camera. Okay, so let me show you guys how to actually crop this and make it so that it is, you know, doable and not taking up the entire screen. You just grab these little corners of the camera here and you're going to put it just like that on your stream. And there you go. Or you can actually, you know, try to uh, crop this by coming down here to your sources gonna right click in and add a filter and you're gonna add a crop pan filter right here by clicking the plus button on the effects filter and for me I love to do a kind of rectangle a vertical rectangle look so I will do like a 500 by 500 crop oops Got a little zero there um, and there you go you can just hit close and then you can resize this however you want and just throw that on your screen here, just like that. From here, you can kind of just go wild and do whatever you want. Uh, if you have any other overlays that you're getting from like someone who's custom making them for you, I don't know which camera to look at guys. <laughs> so a really cool thing that you can do that I actually recommend that you, you do is to add a full screen camera, come down to your scenes, go ahead and add a full camera, we're just gonna call this full camera, full. We're gonna call this full screen camera. We're gonna hit okay. And you wanna go ahead and add that, uh, a, a new camera device. So we're gonna add a video capture device and it's gonna be a new one. We're not gonna add the existing one. So the existing one has the crop on it. So you don't want the existing one. And we're gonna click our iPhone as the camera. And you can see here that it is now full screen here. And all you have to do to switch between the two scenes is to just click scene. Now you don't want to do that when you're, you know, gaming. So you probably want to go ahead and add a hotkey, which I'm going to do right now and show you exactly how that works. You want to go over to your settings and go to hotkey, scroll down till you see your scenes here. And you want to put a hotkey on your the scene that you want. So. Here you'll see your full screen camera scene and then your gaming scene that we didn't name. This is the gaming scene though. We're gonna put this one on one. And we're gonna put our camera scene on two. So, and we're gonna hit apply. So now, whenever you wanna switch over and talk to your chat or your, your stream uh, directly in full screen, you just hit two on the keyboard and there you go. You switch and then if you wanna go back to your game, you switch back to your game just like that. But a click of a button and you don't even have to click your scenes like this, you can just one and two. Now you can see that between these changes, the, the, the transitions here, 
Um, you can see that it's doing a fade and that's because our scene transition is a fade. You can also do a cut, which, you know, just cuts straight to the different scene, which is fine as well. You can also add a bunch of different other ones by hitting the little plus button here and then add different, uh, you know, different scenes. There's also a stinger that you can add and the stinger is something that you customize yourself. Um, you can add a video file in here and customize it uh, however you want. This is a little bit more advanced, but <clears throat> there is a way to add your own customized uh, transitions. So now I wanna show you guys what my overlays look like and how I do it on Mac. Oh, this is what my overlays look like when I stream. I have a bunch of different sources. I have music that plays whenever I start my streams. Um, it's usually just on and it just starts by default. And all this is is, you know, I have a local file on my computer and uh, it just sources that file from the computer. I just go to browser and find it and then put it in here just like this. You can also have it loop when it ends. Just a bunch of different settings you can do for this. Um, but that plays by itself when it the stream starts. And then whenever I'm ready to go ahead and start my stream, I switch over to the new console setup here. That is my, that's what I call my <laughs> gaming setup. Right now, everything is blank because I haven't actually set up. I don't stream on my Mac, I stream on my PC. But um, for the sake of this video, I can go ahead and set this stuff up real fast for you guys. So you can see how this looks when I actually get started here. So this works as layers, guys. So like if something's above the other thing in your sources, it means it's gonna cover it up. Um, you want to go ahead and for my purposes, I have this little animated box here that goes over my camera. I just put my camera underneath that box so that the box stays, um, over my camera and I get this kind of effect here. This is basically my just chatting and you can see everything's not set up yet. So I'm going to do this all in real time for you guys. I have the game in this little box down here and my camera is supposed to be up here, but it is currently not. So let me go ahead and grab my full screen camera. We're just gonna be using my phone again. There you go. And then just like this, and I talk to people. And now you, you might see that the camera actually looks different, the coloring. It's because I have a filter on here. If I go and right click the camera and go to filters, you can see I have a color correction on there. So that's why the colors are popping a little bit more. Um, adding a color correction, you just come up to effects filters, hit the little plus button and add a color correction. Hit OK and then you have the color correction applied. But uh, I already have it here and you just move the sliders. You can change a bunch of different stuff, saturation, hue, all that good stuff. Links are in the description for you guys if you want to go ahead and pick up any of these overlays that I got. They have a lot of different colors and if you buy the full pack, you can get all the custom like all the files where you can customize it. Um, this transition is actually the transition I have is from showdown. It's actually uh, actually edited it so it it doesn't actually have the sound effect that's on here. I actually added that so um, You know Play around with all the settings play around a lot with this if you want like a video of Me showing you how I edit because I, I am a full-time editor. That's like my main job um, been doing it for years so a long time 10 years or so I'm, I'm coming up on a decade but like yeah like if you want anything like that let me know but um this is really cool i also have my full screen camera here and then there's also music that plays down here you know and this is my be right back <laughs> where i just kind of have the game kind of in the background with some music we have our stream ending which is the same it's just a game here with my schedule down here, my ats, and yeah, the stream's ending and it just kind of plays out. So now that you have everything set up, you might be wondering how do I listen to the game if I'm going to be using headphones and a mic? So if you're on PlayStation, Sony has this thing where they cut all audio and route it directly through, through your controller whenever you plug headphones into the controller. In order to use your headphones and your mic for your party, you're gonna have to split the audio between your controller and your capture card. And the only way to do that is with a audio splitter. You can get one from like Best Buy or like Walmart or whatever. Elgato does sell their own splitter that has its own like cool settings and whatnot that comes with it. It's called the Chatlink Pro. 
it's like 15 bucks i think 15 or 20 dollars link down below in the description if you want to pick this up you're gonna need this i get a lot of comments asking about audio and the controller and using headsets and whatnot it's you guys got to split your audio if you're on ps5 ps4 sony routes audio to the controller taking away from the capture card you have to use something like this to split the audio and it's pretty simple to uh to get it to work so the chat link looks like this guys and it basically has a end here that you're going to plug into your elgato now your elgato is going to have a headphone jack right here as an audio in jack you're going to want to plug the audio in part portion right into there just like that and then you want to go ahead and take your headphones your headset and you want to go ahead and connect your headset to the uh, open end on the Elgato chat link. I'm going to plug that in just like that. So we have this in here. This is your headset going into this part of the chat link. And then we're going to have your the other end here go into your controller just like this. So you should be getting audio coming in once you plug everything in correctly here. Uh, if you wanted to turn up and down the audio, it'll be right here. You are taking away audio from your stream. So if you end up turning audio down, you'll see down here in the audio mixer that the audio is super low, although it's very high here. Right click your game audio down here. We're just going to add a filter, hit this plus button and add a gain. Hit OK. And then you can go ahead and raise your game audio from this setting here all the way to where you think it is good. Usually if it's hitting anywhere uh, around negative 20 to about negative 12, ne negative 15, you should be good there. Um, you know, you could always go into your advanced audio properties and monitor your audio and make sure that you're not, it's not too loud, you know, for your stream. Xbox, I don't think you guys have this issue. All links are down in the description for you guys for everything you will need. And if you're having any problems at all with this setup or you need some extra help getting everything put together, you can go ahead and hop on a call with me and I will help you out one-on-one -on -one personally. I hope this video helped you out and you got value out of it. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe for more. And if you're wondering about how I got my overlays and where I got them from, how I set them up and everything in particular, I made a video over here explaining exactly how I did that. Go ahead and check that out and I'll see you over there.